Montana is one of the true meccas of North American fly fishing. It's famously known for its vast landscapes, abundant hatches, and breathtaking scenery. Many of its acclaimed fisheries are written about in books, talked about on forums, and even seen in major motion pictures. Oh, I'll never leave Montana, brother. It truly is an amazing place. Every year around July and August, grasshoppers flood the banks of the rivers. Because they're not great flyers, they can easily get blown into the river. These grasshoppers offer a high protein source for trout, and when they're feeding on them, it can be some of the best dry fly fishing all year. Oh, dude, real fish. No, no, don't go down there. Don't go down. Many of Montana's famous rivers offer amazing fishing opportunities during this time. There's plenty of information online on how to fish them, and local fly shops can assist you in the right direction. Although these are great places to fish, and you may even have the chance at a fish of a lifetime, I'm more fascinated by the fisheries that don't get talked about. These are the ones you can't find information about online. The ones that you drive over while traveling to the next town, but never stop to check out. And typically, these are the ones that fly shops don't tell you about. These locations are further off the beaten path and require a little more research to find, but often yield a higher reward. Oh, let's go! Due to the postponement of our Colorado bus trip, I decided to take advantage of my now open schedule. So I called up my buddy Will, a fellow angler and talented filmmaker out of northern Montana. Both of us are suckers for small stream fishing, and we share an eagerness to explore the unknown. We have no idea what to expect here. I've never yeah. fished this before. For over a year now, Will and I have talked about planning a trip together, and this was the perfect opportunity. We're looking forward to some of the best fly fishing the lower 48 has to offer, in my opinion. A rough plan was put together, and before I knew it, I was on a plane to Montana. We would be spending five days living out of Will's truck, exploring the prairies of Montana. It was hopper season, and we were hoping to feed the fish some big bugs. Alright, before we get into the video, I want to let you know that in July, we had a record month in apparel sales, which is crazy. We released our summer collection on July 11th, and the new gear has been a huge hit so far. I hope you guys realize that the fact that I'm sitting here making fishing videos and sharing these stories is because of you. You guys have bought merch, shared the videos, subscribed, and just have been along for the journey. So to thank you, I'm gonna be doing a big giveaway over the next two weeks. I'm taking a portion of my YouTube earnings from last month, and I'm gonna be buying three cameras, which I'm gonna be giving away to three of you. Documenting my fishing adventures over the years has led me to some of the most amazing places I could have ever imagined, and through that process, I've met some of my best friends. So I'm hoping with this, it can give some of you the opportunity opportunity to start documenting your adventures and help jumpstart your creative endeavors. So for all of you who have spent at least $30 on our website since the release of our summer collection, you will be entered into this giveaway. And if you haven't yet, but you've been thinking about getting some Wi-Fi gear, you have until the 28th of this month to enter. Our website is linked below and I will announce the winners at the start of the next video. All right, let's get into it. What's up, baby? Hey, How are you? Hey, man. Awesome, man. Yeah. Glad you made it. I know, dude. I got to see this. So, this is where all the magic happens. Phelps on the Fly Production Studio. Mattresses, not for magic, but for, that's for sound dampening. All the racks are empty because I first grabbed all my gear. Like, the main idea is I want to be able to set up a backdrop and have like interview setups going on in here and like be able to shoot products, do whatever I want, you know, like have all the space to think and like mm -hmm. create. But yeah, you can see how many public land blocks there are out there amongst all the private land and that's where all the fishing goes down. The generator, cause we're filmmakers. 
<laughs> need to charge shit. This is a filmmaker's road trip. 24, 24, 24, 70. We just landed in Montana, packed up the truck, got everything. I think we got everything. I think. We're going to drive away and then it's going to occur to us about 20 miles down yeah. the road. If you guys haven't already, you need to check out Will's channel on YouTube. And he's actually going to be shooting a separate video on a piece on me, which is kind of cool. He's going to be putting that out the same day that this video is released. So after you watch this video, go check that out. Yeah. Looking what what are we looking to forward to? Oh, dude, we're looking forward to some of the best fly fishing the lower 48 has to offer, in my opinion. I'm, I'm a small water guy. I know you're a small yep. water guy. And East Coast guys. <laughs> East Coast guys, yep. So this is a little bit of an East Coast vibe out west, some tight quarters, some hopefully some larger fish. It's the time of year when you see a lot of terrestrials along the bank, so hoping to feed some trout, some big flies, and see if we can get something done here. We're kind of headed out to this area of Montana that I compare more to Patagonia. This spot is pretty far from the rest of humanity. I mean, all there is is ranches and small town, not a lot of resources, so we bring out our own water. And I use this jug to store enough for three, four days of cooking, coffee, oatmeal, you name it, filling our water bottles. This is it right here. So we're gonna get this nice, fresh, clean nectar of the mountains. There we go. Yeah. So we're kind of in a crossroads right now. Some of the spots out here that we're gonna go fish, Will has fished before, and we know there's good fish. We know there's big browns, but we're also thinking we wanna do some exploring, check out some new stuff. All this is new to me, but <laughs> but new to Will. So uh, we got a little, little game plan for how we're gonna solve this right now. <laughs> that way is a river I've never fished, but I've got some intel, could be really good. That way is where we have fish, and I know it's really good. So both options are going to be good because exploratory fishing is always good no matter whether the fishing itself is good or bad. And that way we know it's going to happen. So what do you think? Heads we go to where we want to go and we know that there's fishing or tails we go up the <laughs> You need to bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tails new stream, heads old stream. And we'll go one flip. Okay. You ready or, for or, this? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see it. Oh, you get that audio? <laughs> Queen. Are you ready? Yep. It's heads. All right, we're going to where we know. All right, we just got to our first spot. And uh, as you can tell, we are in the Great Plains and the wind is cooking right now. Uh, it's a good welcome to Montana. But we've just got about maybe an hour or two to fish until it gets dark. So we're just gonna pack light, just gonna pack one rod. Like what do we do? We decide go with the four weight. I think we're gonna go with the four weight. Seven foot four. So the old H two. Little four weight action. Two three reel. Oh, that was out of focus. There we go. <laughs> oh, there's an orange hopper. That one's really dark colored. Orange, orange. White hoppers, yellow. You can have any hopper. We even got purple ones, dude. Yeah, we got purple hoppers. Hopper Town USA, baby. You can tell there's like no path from people walking. Yeah, through. yeah. Did he eat it? Yeah, it's too fast and too fast. Fish. Holy shit. Round town, baby. Fighting good, dude. Especially on this little four way. Hell yeah. It feels so big on this small rod, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Dude. Oh, not a bad fish to start it off on, dude. A brownie. Let's go, dude! <laughs> On the hopper, daddy. Yeah! First fish in Montana, dude. Oh. Oh. We go around the rock. Did they dog it on that rod? Yeah. There we go. We're going. Oh! Dude, that was a good one. Oh, dude, look at it. Oh, sh Did you see that? Yeah. Dang it, dude. I don't know if there's another one of those up here. There are not many places in the world that make me happier than than being here and uh, I had no plans to make it out to Montana this summer until just a few weeks ago when I talked with Will. So really excited for this week to get to explore some of these smaller creeks and hopefully find some big fish. We just got here. We are set up at camp. We're on this beautiful lake right here. We've got the rooftop tent. It's where we're gonna be sleeping. We've got some food in the Yeti right here. We are set up. I mean, this is gonna be sweet the next couple days. plan today is to go continue our Spring Creek journey. We're camped next to this beautiful lake right on the edge of the Rockies and the main lake fishes pretty well, but right now with the water being pretty warm and stuff, we don't want to fish the main lake, but there is a spring fed backwater where we'll have some colder water, hopefully some more fish. We'll poke around there, maybe see what's going on. If it's windy, uh, maybe jut over to the Spring Creeks and throw some big hoppers. this year man it's wild every year is different out here do you think maybe making just a blind cast around that edge yeah, there's a glare like right at where that weed line is Dude, right there, there's a dragonfly on the water. That's sick. Not quite as far as they were, but they might cruise. Dude, they're starting to rise all over now because it's calming down. Dude, look out in the middle. See all those rises? Yeah, it's been tough out here. I mean, fish are rising, but they're just, our timing isn't there, you know? Like, our flies are in the water when they're cruising over here, and then they're rising here, and then we're fishing over here. And it's just this endless chase, so. We're gonna be camped out here again tonight, give these fish a rest, go hit some spring creeks. Sun's getting high in the sky, so it'll be cool to get on some smaller water and get out into the shade, you know? We're standing here just getting baked, so. <laughs> <laughs> This chewed up fly is probably from last time we were here, honestly. <laughs> Panty dropper hopper, all these sort of deals. <laughs> Look at that one just missing all its legs. Still in the box. 
Last time I parked in the same exact spot to fish this river, the rancher rolled up and said he saw bear in the area. They come out of the Rockies and they'll use these drainages to come out from the mountains. So this is where you find them, is exactly where we're gonna be going, is into the trees where we can't see them and they can't see us until we're right up on them. Right there, right in that edge of the shadow. It's a pretty solid drift. I've seen worse drifts. Right there, dude, there's definitely passive fish somewhere in here. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it's just a fish eating small bugs. Oh, so you went fully airborne for it, dude. All right, I have faith. The chubby never fails. You know what they say? Oh, it's so juicy. Come on now. Oh my gosh, he's sick. Dude, he sharked it. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Come on, net. I legitimately cannot get it. There you go. Oh, that was a nice fish. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Oh, that was another nice fish. What? They're missing it. That one I don't think I pricked. He might come back. That's slow too. Sick. Nice brown. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh yeah, good fish. Good fish. Oh, that was so sick, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, let's go. That's a thick brown. Oh my gosh, bro. Maybe? That was a sick fish. What'd I say? <laughs> Another healthy brownie. Nice red spots. We've got the solo hopper on. We hadn't tied a nymph on yet, and that's a great thing. The best thing about fishing these big hoppers is one, they're easy to see for the angler and for the camera. We're running this guy. Nothing crazy. Just got some elk hairs and some foam, but this thing's been the ticket today. All right, here we go. Come on, be there. That should have gotten smacked. Oh, go! Oh. God, that was a good fish. Dude. Oh. Did you see that when I hooked him? He just took off. Dude, that was a big That was, fish. I pricked the hell out of him. Instantly just took off. Well, let's get back in there. If I had any, any lighter tippet, that, that fish would snap me. All right, we're in this inside edge. Looks juicy. That color change. There he is. Not, 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 not that big. Good fish, nonetheless. Good eat. <laughs> oh, 
Well, we got one. Not, not the one we wanted, but we still got a fish. Right in that edge, though. That's where it should be. All right, you ready? Oh gosh, there he is. Literally the next cast, dude. Oh my gosh. This might be bigger. Let's go. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, that's actually a really good fish. <laughs> oh no. Buffed it. I need to get him in a little further. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> Finally. Epic, dude. That's so sick. Yeah, doggy. Let's go. So sick. There you go. There So yeah, we've been out here kind of exploring this area of Montana out on the Great Plains. We got endless Great Plains all the way to the East Coast and then we got the Rockies over here. And there's a lot of ranches in this area, you know, it's flat, there's a lot of farmland. And dispersed amongst these blocks of farmland are other blocks of public land. So we're using, you know, some apps on our phone, uh, maps, we're referring to some different resources to figure out where these blocks of public land are. Sometimes they don't even look like public land. Like this doesn't look public when you drive up to it, but these uh, rivers just don't get the same amount of traffic they do when they're called Madison <laughs> or the Gallatin. These are a little bit off the beaten path, so in order to find them, you have to do a little digging. Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> no one's gonna just tell you to come out here. Like you gotta do it on your own and really do your homework and do your research. And that's what makes it so fun because ultimately you may end up finding a really good spot and sometimes you don't, but it's you put in your time and oh. things eventually come together. Well, we just got back to camp and we pulled up on our campsite that we got last night that we reserved for two different nights and some RV camper deal had uh, kind of taken over the spot. From so Wisconsin. From Wisconsin. Not even from here. Come on now. Jabronis. <laughs> So we had to go pick a different uh, campsite, which isn't the worst. It, is, it isn't the end of the world, but we are a little more exposed to the wind if it gets windy tonight. So we had a good solid day of fishing today. So we're just gonna set up camp again, get some food rolling, and uh, kind of make a game plan for the next couple days. Good. To come out here and get away from people is pretty special. You know, most fishing areas are figured out. There it is. No, 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 don't go down there. <laughs> we have no idea what to expect here. I've never yeah. fished this before. We're pulling the trigger and we're going to check it out and see if there are fish in this river. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. That was a tank. 